All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the June 21st Mississippi Advisory Commission meeting. <clears throat> Thank you to everyone for being here. I'd like to recognize Chris Vines with Senator Wicker's office. Thank you for coming out and joining us today, Chris. All right, we're going to call this meeting to order. <clears throat> I will lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance today. I pledge allegiance to the flag states of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, We've got Patrick Levine sitting in for the director today. The director's watching online. He had to be out of town for some for some stuff today. So I'm gonna ask Patrick if he'll lead us in our prayer today. Father, we do thank you, and we praise you for the opportunity to be here today, Lord, to make decisions uh, pertaining this beautiful Mississippi Gulf Coast. And Father, we ask that you give us wisdom and guidance, that you would lead us, and that we would follow. Lord, we ask that you protect our fishermen, our patrol officers out on the water, for those that are out enjoying the great resource that we have, that you keep them safe. And Lord, that you would help us to, uh, to see the resource uh, become bountiful, and, and that it would be great. We say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Patrick. All right. <clears throat> minutes from May 17th. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we're going to have a small change to today's agenda. We're going to be removing F2 from the agenda today. With the removal of F2, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll second. All in favor? All right. All right. Turn it over to you, Mr. Patrick. Well, good morning. I'll tell you, it's been a another productive month at the Department of Marine Resources. And often uh, we look at our team and, and so excited to see that the people that are, that are coming on board, that are being promoted within, uh, that want to be a part of the team. And we have a couple of employment updates this morning. Uh, first up, you see Chris Graham, Austin Burmaster, and William Larson. Those guys have been contractors with us for, for some time now, and we had the opportunity to bring them on board full time. So we're, we're excited about that. Uh, Katie Nelson is a new hire in Coastal Resource Management. Uh, excited about that. And then in Marine Patrol, it's always exciting whenever you see the promotions that occur. Uh, Donovan Dalsey, Curtis Norfleet, Michael Fitz, uh, all being promoted in the office of Marine Patrol. And I tell you, those guys are doing a good job. They're, they're doing a lot, a lot of good work out there on the water like everybody else. Michelle Williams, uh, she, she recently promoted to human resources officer. And so I know that she's been working extremely hard in coastal resources and she had the opportunity to go forth and, and help the agency as a whole uh, by transferring to human resources. So Michelle made that even more recently, uh, Christina Broussard has been promoted to the um, an environmental natural resources supervisor position, and she's going to be over the Seafood Technology Bureau. And so we're excited for, for Christina and Jason Ryder was promoted to an environmental natural resources supervisor, also being the Shellfish Bureau director. So we're excited for them. And then we have our summer interns. And it's so, it's so great that every year, so many of our interns, they get the opportunity to be introduced to the Department of Marine Resources, the, the um, things that we get to be a part of on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And you see all of those written down below that are there. And you know what's really neat is even the other day I, I had one of them walk up to me, and and she said this. She said, she said, Mr. Patrick, what's the chances that when I finish my internship, I could possibly be on the team of the DMR? And you know what that says? That says a lot for the people that she is working with, the departments that she's working with, and for the other employees that at the end of this internship 
Uh, they look forward to possibly uh, being a part of this team. And so we are thankful for them and where it may lead in the future. So thankful for all of the employees that we have uh, working, thankful for the interns and, and the difference that they're making. We, um, as mentioned before, uh, Director Spragans is online. Uh, he may have the opportunity to, to share with us in a little bit. If you're here and you need to fill out a, a public comment form, uh, fill out that co public comment form located on the back table and hand it to Crystal Mata up here on the front row. Crystal, raise your hand real quick. And so if you have a public comment form, please be sure to get those filled out and, and brought to her. There's a few deadlines that are coming up that we need to be aware of. First one up is uh, the Tidelands applications. Tidelands applications are due in no later than July the 1st at 5 p.m. And if you have questions about that, uh, you can reach out to Sonia and she'll be glad to, to talk you through a Tidelands application, but that, that is gonna be due July the 1st. Go Mesa applications, the same thing. The, the Go Mesa applications are, are open. Uh, there are applications that are located on the Department of Marine Resources website, and those application, that application process is going to close on July the 1st. Now, for those that may have uh, applications that have been put in the past and maybe you need to make some upgrades on the projects or make some changes, uh, be sure to, to notify Russell, notify us, let us know of the changes that you have on your application, your previous application. And then if you have a new project that you want to submit, now's the time because that's going to close on July the 1st. So be sure to, to check on that. It was mentioned, um, mentioned last month about the legislation that's going into effect. And one of the pieces of legislation that's going into effect pertains derelict vessels and the removal of derelict vessels in the three coastal counties. And the legislature gave us the, the funding to, to remove derelict vessels and the uh, authority to, to walk through the process of removing derelict vessels. Now, uh, we are gonna need a little bit of help and so if y'all know of anybody in the community that would be interested in, in being a part of the team by put, being put on a list that's gonna go out for bids to remove derelict vessels, uh, reach out to our finance office and ask them to make sure your name is on the list to remove derelict vessels because there are quite a few that are out there uh, you know, that, that are gonna to have to be removed very, very soon. So make sure you get your name on that list. And if y'all know anybody, you can, you can give us those names and phone numbers and we'll reach out to them because we are gonna need some help accomplishing that, that goal. And if you have any questions on it, you can reach out to Russell Weatherly and he can help you out. So that's derelict vessels. Another thing that's on the horizon, horizon and it may be, uh, may be a few, a few weeks is that the agency has been uh, in the process of going through all of its surplus equipment. You know, one thing about it, we have boat engines and boats that, that they get a little tired, a little wore out, and, and we've been storing those up. Same thing for vehicles. We have a few vehicles. We have some uh, ATVs and uh, different equipment that it has expired its shelf life here at the DMR. So uh, in, in the, in the, in the weeks and in the next couple months to come, be looking for us to have an auction where we're going to be notifying the public that uh, we'll be getting rid of some of that surplus equipment. One of the things that a lot of people are excited about right now, uh, snapper season. You know, it's amazing that we have a few days left in season number one. And already I, I started getting messages and phone calls. People asking me, what is the second season going to look like? And I can't say that I really know. It, you know, I'm going to leave that up to, to Tracy and her team. Uh, but we do know this much that there have been 1,842 completed tails and scales trips. Can you believe that Marine Patrols check 200 of those? For over 10%, that's 10.8% of the vessels that go out get checked. And, and I don't know about y'all, but if I were leaving my house and I knew that Jackson County Sheriff's Department was going to stop me 10% of the time, I'd probably drive a little bit slower. You know, because uh, your, your odds are extremely high that you're going to get checked. But what's really great, and just uh, hats off and kudos to our, our fishermen here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, 
Of 200 vessels checked, only four of them were non-compliant. Only four of them non-compliant. Put it this way in percentage, that's two thousandths of a percent. And so thank you to the people on the Mississippi Gulf Coast for valuing the resource we have in Red Snapper and making sure that we have that resource there in the future. Uh, of our ACL, 33.7% of the ACL has been meet, met with an estimated catch of 51,063 pounds. And uh, I don't know if fisheries will mention it later, but uh, the, the season, it is going to, uh, the first season will close July the 4th at midnight. And I know that, that people are expecting a, a second season and, and we'll be able to report on that later on, depending on the catch and what it looks like. But right now uh, we're at 33.7% of our ACL. And so we'll see what the, what the future brings. So th there's a lot that's going on at the DMR. We will be closed on, on the 4th of July on Independence Day. And uh, we'll be back to work ready to go on Tuesday, July the 5th. And so that's, uh, that's all I have, sir. Thank you. So, <clears throat> are you going to touch on the processors grant, monetary? Uh, we're going to get Tracy Floyd to come up here okay. and right. update us on the on the processors grant. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners uh, Patrick, Sandy, distinguished guests. We will begin accepting online applications on July first. It'll run through uh, August 16th. Um, this will be for costs incurred uh, January 27th, 2020 through December 31st, 21 related to COVID. And there's a listing of what those, those can be on our website. Um, you'll just need basic information, license number, contact info, and of course, proof of your, of your loss. Um, do, if you have any questions, call me, Eric Bruce, or, or the Seafood Technology Team. Now, is that going to be a paper application or is it going to be an online application? It is online, but if you need assistance, we're happy to help you here at the office. That's exciting. July the 1st, we're going to, we're going to get this going. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there's not going to be an update on the, we don't have any update on the Bonnie Carey. So <laughs> nothing to say there uh, as before. Such and a speedy process. It, it is a speedy process. <laughs> just moving too fast to update on it. <laughs> well, you know, I'm thankful that Chris is here. and Maybe he can help us out a little bit. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so I believe that Sandy's going to give us an action update from prior meetings. All right, Miss Sandy. Okay. The commission recommended and the director approved the following motions at the May meeting. A variance in coastal zone consistency for Herring County Port and Harbor Commission for excavation riprap piers for mooring dolphins and dredging. A variance in permit for Huntington Ingalls for continual maintenance dredging and new dredging with the condition that the applicant be required to use a DMR approved beneficial use site. A variance in issuance of a certificate of exclusion for Jackson County Port Authority for dredging also with the condition that they be uh, required to use the beneficial use site if available. A variance and a permit for Harrison County Sand Beach for beach tree nourishment, consisting of fill, borrow pits, repair of outfall structures, and a 10-year permit for maintenance. A permit for the DMR to create a, a Norster Reef up to 57.5 acres in the St. Louis Bay in Harrison County and proposed changes to Title 22 Part 18 for special permits was forwarded to the Secretary of State's office for notice of intent. And there were two salt, saltwater fin fish records for Rock Hine by Trey Tinkle and Smooth Puffer by Philip Overman. That's it. Thank you, Miss Sandy. You're welcome. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, scroll down there. All right, so it looks like that's all for the director's report. Joe, you did a great job today. Thank you. Uh, commissioner's report. Do we have any anything from any of our commissioners? I was yep. just going to report on what I was telling Chief a little while ago. I got 
got pulled over, stopped, or just checked uh, last Wednesday, and the uh, the staff was was super super nice and you know willing to uh, you know have a good easy conversation, and we got through it really quick. And it was just uh, it was a good experience, man. So keep up the good work, Chief. Thank y'all. Great, always good to hear. Yeah, uh, thank you, Commissioner. I just want to give an update on what kind of um, you know issues our fishermen are facing this year just to give you an idea like the first quarter imported shrimp um, totals are up over 73 million pounds all the way to 633 million pounds just for the first quarter alone um, now the american shrimp processors we're estimating that the imported shrimp that are coming in are going to reach over 2 billion pounds into the united states here alone and you know we're also estimating consumption at 1.5 billion pounds. So that is a lot of excess inventory. Now to put all that into perspective, um, the entire amount of landings from the Gulf of Mexico, according to NOAA, were only 73 million pounds last year. So the increase in the first quarter is equivalent to the entire landings for all of 2021 for the Gulf of Mexico. So these guys are also out there paying twice as much for fuel as they paid in years past. And, you know, they're getting about 30% less for the product. Uh, so there are issues all the way around. We ask you to continue supporting uh, the, our fishermen here and to continue asking the restaurants uh, to make sure that the shrimp you're eating are domestic. Very good. <clears throat> it's hard to beat a, a shrimp fresh out of the Gulf, I tell you. Yeah, and also uh, the American Shrimp Processors is uh, at the USDA asking them to participate in the Commodity Procurement Program. Um, so, Chris, we appreciate the, the support Senator Wicker has given our fishermen in the past, and we ask for continued support for that. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Marine Patrol, Chief. Good morning, commissioners, legal, uh, Mr. Veen. Well, you know, May is normally our kickoff of the busy season, but you know, normally it's always busy. Uh, Memorial Day weekend went, went well. Uh, no one was hurt. Well, there was a few minor injuries, but no one uh, succumbed to those injuries. So everything went well with that. Uh, Marine Patrol checked over 2,400 people. Uh, not so much that weekend, but uh, I'm sure that was the accumulation of that weekend, most of it. We had, uh, once again, snapper went well. Uh, people were very compliant. Uh, just for that, for this May month, we only had one possession of undersized red snapper and one no tails and scales. The other two falls under June. So everybody's playing well and every, everything is going really smoothly. Let me knock on wood. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you have any questions with them, I will field them at this time. But I would like to say this first. Uh, I know we're, we're doing well. May was very smooth. June's very smooth right now. Let's just make sure July, 4th of July weekend, everybody has a good time and very diligent on safety. And just be very careful out there. But also, enjoy yourself. Commissioners. Uh, you know, I think one thing to, to remind people of, I'm seeing – seven alcohol related incidents here fourth of july coming up yes. um, you gotta you gotta be careful out there exactly and we will be out there we'll be looking for that yes sir thank you y'all keep up the good work thank you Morning, everyone. Uh, Greg Christodoulou, Coastal. Uh, I'll be presenting the only agenda item today for Coastal. This is a permit request by the Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality. It's a uh, part of one of the restore projects from the BP oil spill. Uh, it's located along uh, the Hancock County shoreline uh, from Bayou Bolin East to Bayou Caddy. It's in the Preservation Use District and the agent is FC&E Engineering. So the impacts associated with this 
uh, project are approximately 17 acres of uh, unvegetated water bottom fill, and that'll be taken up by riprap breakwaters. Uh, they'll be have gaps in them to allow water to pass through uh, tw approximately 25 foot gaps between each um, section. Uh, the applicant has requested a variance from Mississippi Coastal Program and also a use plan change. Uh, they want to go from a preservation district to a special use restoration district. And they have justified the variances and the use plan. Okay. Here's a outline just showing the area. Uh, the whole system is 1.7 miles. Um, it's going to be very similar to the breakwater that was constructed in the earlier round of the restore project that went from the Pearl River to Bayou Bowen. So to this point right here, that project was much larger. It was almost six miles, 5.9 miles. This one is uh, smaller. It runs 1. Point, oops, excuse me, 1.5 miles from Bayou Bowen east to Bayou Caddy, where the uh, <clears throat> Corps of Engineers, <clears throat> excuse me, breakwater structure is. And then there'll be a smaller two-tenth mile portion right here at the mouth of Bayou Caddy. Again, this is showing the uh, project location. It's not going to be a perfectly straight line. It's going to meander a little bit because they're using the contours. They're trying to keep this uh, structure in depths of three to six feet of water. They're not putting it in deep water. They're putting it just a few hundred feet off of the shoreline. So it's more effective protecting the shoreline. Uh, also, you have the other benefit associated with this is the secondary productivity, all the attachment sites that'll provide for algae, barnacles, oysters, mussels, and in turn attracting other species, crabs and fish, both recreational and commercially important species. Uh, here's kind of a profile and side view, cross-sectional view of the breakwater structure. At the top, it'll be 15 feet wide. Uh, at the most, only about two and a half feet will be exposed above the water line. Project was placed on public notice. We received no comments during the public notice as well as a public hearing as far as the justifications go. And there was no comments from the public hearing as well. DEQ is reviewing the project. Archives and History has requested a cultural resource survey. Wildlife, fisheries, and parks were no, submitted no comments, and a rent exempt public, tried, public trust titlings lease will be required from the Secretary of State's office. So, staff has reviewed the project, and based on the project uh, results of the findings, that it will serve a higher public purpose by reducing the impacts to the marsh. Um, by the way, um, the earlier project, the one that's already in place now, they've seen an 85% reduction in the loss of the marsh in those sections. And in some areas that there, there has been some marshes accreted as well. So um, also, like I mentioned that the structures will provide many attachment spots for invertebrates and algae. And staff request that the, uh, make a motion that the commission recommend to the executive director approval of the variance and the use plan change, along with contingent on clearance from MDEQ and archives. Any questions, I'll do what I can. If you got really specific stuff, the engineering folks are here to answer those. I don't have a question, but I can tell you that's basically right there in my backyard and seeing what's happened with the initial part of that and it's it's been great i mean it has done wonders for the fishing you know you can see areas over there where that marsh has started creeping its way out towards the rocks as opposed to us losing it as fast as we have i think it's a, a great project uh, really good for hancock county there questions <clears throat> i'll uh I'll make a motion to approve the staff's recommendation. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Greg. Thank y'all. There. All right, Miss Leslie. 
Office of Finance and Administration. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Leslie Brewer, CFO. I'll be presenting the financials for the month ended May 31st, 2022. At the end of May, our state revenue was 5.4 million. Our state net income was a negative 621,000. Our total agency net income was 26.1 million and our total agency revenue was 52.4. Um, we did get our um, GAMESA funding this month, uh, for May of 29.4 million and we're still waiting on our state appropriations to cover that state deficit. Um, after 11 months of fiscal year 2022, we have 78.7% of our operating budget remaining and then Tidelands has 52.3%. Uh, Anyone have any questions? Ma'am, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Public Affairs, Ms. Charmaine. Good morning, everyone. The Mississippi Department of Marine Resources was mentioned 39 times in local, state, and national media since the May MACMR <laughs> meeting. News items included Trump season opening, Red Snapper season opening, Commissioner McClendon's appointment to the commission, USDA grant applications opening July 1st, and voter safety was summer underway. The Office of Marine Patrol has participated in numerous events since the last meeting. These events include career days at Gulfport Central Middle School and Anniston Elementary School, National Maritime Day in Pascagoula, Boating Safety Day at West Marine, the City of Gulfport Kids Fishing Program, and Boat and Water Safety Presentations at Long Beach Library in each of the eight locations in the Jackson George Regional Library System. The Shellfish Bureau's Jason Ryder and Ellen Coffin gave a presentation on oyster aquaculture at the East Central Library, and Madison Parker, also in the Shellfish Bureau, gave a presentation at the Humane Society of South Mississippi's Club Paws Summer Day Camp and Viking Village Summer Camp at Bayou View Elementary School. Michael Lee at the Lyman Aquaculture Hatchery set up a table for Ocean Springs CTE Career Summer Camp discussing aquaculture and our agency's work at the hatchery. And the Shrimp and Crab Bureau participated in Sand Jam 2022, Turtle Up, Mississippi, and Ocean Springs, where hundreds of visitors stopped by to learn about Mississippi's wildlife and habitats. Thank you, Cheryl Main. <clears throat> All right, so before we get into marine fisheries, we had one other omission on the agenda that we didn't mention earlier. We just found out about a few minutes ago. We're gonna to need to remove K2 from the agenda today as well. So we'll go ahead and do one and skip right over to three. Jason? If you would make a motion for that. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I have a motion to remove K2? I'll second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, pre presenting today uh, for final adoption, uh, Title 22, Part 18, Rules and Regulations for Special Permits. Karen, can you progress it? On May 17th, uh, the advisory commission recommended to the executive director that the new format and changes to part 18 be sent to secretary of state's office for notice of intent. The executive director approved the recommendation and the notice of intent for proposed regulation was filed with secretary of state's office on May 23rd. The notice of the proposed regulation was published in the Sun Herald on May 25th. And the notice was also posted on our website on May 26th. To the left there, that's the notice of intent uh, filing with Secretary of State's office. There's the public notice uh, link and page on our website and the affidavit of publication with the Sun Herald. No public comments have been received to date. And the proposed regulation will be filed with Secretary of State's office for final adoption. The proposed effective date for the revised regulation will be 30 days from filing. 
and I'll take any questions you've got. Any, any questions? Doesn't sound like it. So we don't we don't need a motion on this. Yeah, you need we a do. motion for final adoption. Okay, final adoption. I'll make the motion for final adoption. Do we have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to skip K2 artificial reef update. Uh, good morning, commissioners, Mr. Levine, Ms. Chestnut. Uh, just want to give you all a brief update on, on some of the things our program's been working on. I'm Travis Williams. I'm the Artificial Reef Bureau Director. Uh, over the last... <clears throat> Karen, I may have to get you to advance. Uh, over the last uh, couple months, we've been working on a few things. I wanted to bring some of them to y'all's attention in case you may have seen some, some releases. Uh, this first slide here is of the uh, RV Hermes. This was a vessel that was donated by GCRL's program in Ocean Springs. Uh, the vessel, actually, just a little bit of history, was built in 1955 by Kramer Marine out of Gulfport. Um, it was an important part of their uh, field excursions with numerous uh, research projects. Uh, this vessel was donated to the Mississippi Gulf Fishing Banks uh, last year. Their organization cleaned the vessel and prepped it for deployment. And then on May the 18th, uh, our agency uh, deployed the vessel on FH2, which is just approximately uh, 18 miles south of Pascagoula. Um, I've got a video here of the deployment. I don't know if it'll, if it'll play. But the video was provided by uh, Mr. Cole Marver, uh, who was out there uh, on behalf of the contractor. Um, so everything went well the day, that day for the deployment. Uh, the vessel did rest upright on bottom. Um, some of the divers went down afterwards, but um, as you can see from the drone video, it was, it was pretty good, pretty good day for, for the deployment and, and everything. Next, next slide. Uh, so, re and then here in the past past month, um, at, our, at our staging facility over off of Reichel Road in Gulfport, um, we like to accept a lot of uh, secondary use materials. It's typically concrete culverts um, from drainage projects, stuff like that. Uh, so last. Last month we went out on where we received the contract to put this material out. We've done, we did five deployments, five barge loads, which was over 8,000 tons of the secondary use concrete. Um, like I mentioned, it was mostly culverts, uh, manholes, uh, box culverts, and poles. Uh, we were able to create six new sites on FH 13, and we enhanced two existing sites uh, with these materials. Uh, from the photos, you can see kind of see how they load the barge. Um, next slide King. and then actually here's some photos where the, for the deployments um so it typically took it was a full day for the barges to get out there and it took them about a few hours to unload and then any any questions and that looks great i like seeing more habitat being introduced for them out there any questions thank you thank you Morning, Commissioners, Mr. Levine, Chestnut. I'll be talking about um, the first stop is the spotted sea trout endorsement, giving you all an update. As soon as we get the presentation pulled up, we'll go ahead and start through it. So, as you all are aware, uh, the endorsement qualifications changed with the adoption of Title 22, Part 3, had an effective date of May the 1st, 2022. We have observed an increase in our overall endorsements. We've got 52 total, with 26 of those occurring since the promulgation of the new regulation. The following presentation will outline the current landings for the fishery and potential approaches to ensure the quotas met while also maintaining the consistency within the fishery. 
So uh, since we've got a couple new commissioners, we'll go back through the past of so the endorsement history. It was established in 2014. The original rule was to have proof of $5,000 in seafood sales in any consecutive 12 months. And that endorsement was valid for three years after the date of purchase. In 2019, this was updated to the 20% income requirement with it being verified through the trip ticket program. That was an important addition to the regulation and it was valid for one calendar year, January through December. And we also promulgated the hardship clause associated with it. 2022, uh, the new regulation starting May the 1st, it's $1,000 in fin fish sales or $5,000 in seafood products. Once again, verified through the chip ticket program. It's valid for one calendar year, January through December, and the hardship could, could be considered based on sales one year prior to the hardship's onset. So our landings to date are 12,341 pounds. Once again, we've got 52 total spotted sea trout endorsements. If you look at this figure on the right, we had a fair amount of landings per in the month of February, higher than what we normally see. Uh, depressed landings through March uh, and April. And then we see um, in May, which is typically a bigger month for us, we saw that increase in landing. So we do think this, the number of endorsements is having a positive effect on the amount of landings. But if we forecast this through time, it's unsure whether we're gonna truly meet the quota this year or not. And of course we've got um, a few more months to really, you know, fine tune that one. But right now it looks like we're going to be landing anywhere between 35 and 45,000 pounds. And so with that, um, we're going to continue to evaluate and project the trends that are in the fishery and determine if we, uh, need to make future alterations to the endorsement qualifications. And, um, I know Spragans is, uh, uh, director Spragans is on here. Uh, a couple of the options we've looked at so far, one, um, is to make sure that fishermen know about the hardship clause and make use of that should they fall under that um, qualification. Another one is to take the current regulations that we have in place, the thousand dollars of fin fish and take that back in time to let them qualify for a year. Um, we've also talked about the possibility of um, adding in new entrants into the fishery. Now, those last two are gonna take changes to regulation um, and it's gonna take a little bit of thought, but we are, Looking at the landings, we are keeping all this stuff in mind. And once again, the goal is for us to meet the quota for this fishery and maintain the consistency within the fishery. And we still think the 75 total endorsements is the number for us to reach um, based on the history in the fishery. Um, and that's kind of the goal that we're looking at. So just a few more, more participants and a few more landings, I think we'll be right back on track with where this fishery needs to be. And with that, I'll take any questions. <clears throat> What a, a hardship clause. <clears throat> Can you give a little example of that if people don't understand what that's there for? Yeah, so the hardship clause is meant to uh, be there just in case a fisherman runs in, into anything that's outside of their power, um, anything that would be a uh, negative effect on their ability to be able to prosecute in the fishery or be able to, to participate. Those things can be um, sickness is a common one that we see if you come down with a sickness and are unable to go. Um, I think we've had a couple that have come in uh, with, you know, boats being in the yard for a year or being taken up. Um, it's kind of a broad range. And essentially it comes down to things that affect your ability to be able to participate in the fishery that are uncontrollable by you. Okay. Are we exceeded our, our total landings to date in comparison to last year at this time? Um, no, but it's, we're a little bit higher, I think, at this point, if I go back and, and think about it. But if you recall the effects that we have within the pandemic and the year after, along with the Bonacary spillway in 2019, this fishery has been operating in, you know, it's, it's been pretty chaotic over the last few years. So it's, it's hard to really judge this year to previous years. And really, that 75 is, is anchored on the the last five years and primarily based in 2016 when it was a primarily hook and line fishery. And so that's where we get that 75 number from. We feel comfortable that that's the, that's the number of participants that would keep this fishery consistent over time. Jonathan, you got anything? All right. Thank you. All right. It's my favorite one. I like these. We got three of them this time. <clears throat> All right, so uh, we've got three uh, fish records. First one's conventional tackle. 
It's a black belly rosefish. I'm not going to throw that scientific name out there. It's a new record. We haven't had this fish yet. It's two pounds, 11.2 ounces. The angler's Mr. John Wright. There's a picture of the fish. You mind throwing that one forward, Karen? There's a picture of the angler with the fish. Next one we have is an all tackle record. It is a big eye, Preacanthus arenatus. The old record was two pounds, 1.12 ounces. The new record is two pounds, 11.52 ounces. And the angler is Harley Havard. It's a picture of the fish. And here's a picture of the angler with the fish. And then the last one we got for you is an all tackle fish record for the unicorn file fish, Alatoris monoceros. So the old record was one pound, 2.06 ounces. The new record is five pounds, 9.8 ounces. The angle is Mr. Brandon Powell. Here's a picture of the fish. It's a real pretty one. And there's the angler with the fish. So all we need is the motion to recommend the adoption of the new state records. All right. Do we have a motion? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. You want me to touch on the snapper season? Yes. All right. So, um, Mr. Levine nailed it. Um, it's been a pretty good season so far for everybody. We had a large amount of effort occur in the first weekend, specifically that Saturday. It was one of the top five days we've had in the fishery. Uh, we did see a stark decrease in effort after that from the averages from the last couple of years. Um, uh, suspect that gas prices have a pretty good effect on those individuals going out. Um, for the reopening, what we'll likely, uh, do as we always, uh, have is evaluate the landings after July 4th, see where it's at. And we'll try to coincide our openings to maximize the days where other federal species are open. And also to ensure that we make it to that Labor Day mark, like we've always intended to, um, to add on to the Marine Patrol side of things, uh, in the last couple of years, our fishery staff have gone away from having a call center that's based out of state to taking that burden on ourselves um, and having round robin cell phones that go through our marine fishery staff uh, this year with that large amount of effort and everything else opening weekend we only got four calls from fishermen and a couple of those were at 5 a.m but four calls is a record usually we get a dozen or more on the opening weekend so i think we've really been able to get the fishermen participating in the app and and doing it well and it's really showing to be a, a team effort across the agency and also to our anglers participating, so. That's really good. The, you know, that app's pretty simple. Once you get in there and do it one time, it's it's nothing to it. Great. All right, <clears throat> we got any other business today? Doesn't sound like it. Did we have any public comments during this? No public comments. And, you know, uh, a thought as we go out today, echoing what Chief said, as we're looking at Independence Day weekend, we want to encourage people to be safe. But uh, I was just thinking about those men and women that are out there making sure we maintain those freedoms while we're out on the boat and enjoying the resources that we have. Uh, make sure we, we go out and thank those men and women that are out there uh, still protecting our freedoms while we're out there celebrating and, and enjoying and fishing and swimming and boating, um, you know, thank, thankful for what we have. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that all in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you everyone. <laughs>